Merhabalar, ben Sercan. In case you have never thought that Turkish and Japanese languages may have a strong relation and more similarities than you have ever imagined, this and couple of next videos can help you to have such an idea. Today, I'm going to show you some of the grammatical and expressional similarities of Turkish and Japanese by using sentences in comparison. I'm not going to go into grammatical details so much, but I will talk about the sentence structure, parts of a sentence, suffixes and expression methods by using color codes. Fundamental differences between Turkish and Japanese will be a part of another video. The first examples will be about sentence structure and parts of a sentence. The next ones will be about ways of expression. Before we begin, it is important to mention that those of you who speak Turkish or Japanese will definitely understand these similarities deeper and better. But I hope that the color codes and brief explanations will enable everyone to get the idea. Since English sentence structure is very different from Turkish and Japanese, it is definitely not possible to reflect every word in the English translation with color codes. Therefore, I have strived to do as much as possible. To make everything a little bit more clear, generally speaking, in Turkish and Japanese, the verb is at the end of the sentence, and many grammatical concepts are achieved by suffixes. In addition to that, the tenses are formed by certain suffixes after the verb stem. However, the details of those will be a part of one of the next videos. Now, let's get started. The first example will be a basic sentence. This book is red. This book is red. Before we continue, I would like to mention that we have the English sentence in the first line, the Turkish sentence in the second line, and the Japanese sentence in the third, fourth, and the fifth line. I have used kanji in the third sentence wherever possible, while I have written the kanji in hiragana alphabet in the fourth sentence. The fifth sentence is the reading of the third and the fourth sentence. Since there is a formal and informal way of conjugation of the verbs in Japanese, I have mostly used the formal form in this video. Now, let's go back to our sentence. This book is red. In Turkish, bu kitap kırmızıdır. Bu kitap kırmızıdır. In Japanese, konohon wa akai desu. Konohon wa akai desu. As you can see from the colors, I do not really need to say anything, but I would like to give an information about the part which is written in white color. Va particle is called the topic particle in Japanese. It basically declares that what is before this particle is what we are going to talk about in this sentence. This does not exist in Turkish. However, in Turkish, we make the same thing by either using a comma or waiting a little after the topic. Now, let's continue with our next sentence. I go to school every day. I go to school every day. In Turkish, Ben her gün okula giderim. Ben her gün okula giderim. In Japanese, Watashi wa mainichi gakkou ni ikimasu. Watashi wa mainichi gakkou ni ikimasu. As you see, the parts of the sentences of Turkish and Japanese are in the same order. Basic sentence structure of Japanese and Turkish is subject plus object plus verb. As I have previously mentioned, tenses are formed by using suffixes that are added to the stem of the verb. I would also like to emphasize that in both languages, it is also possible to change the order of the parts of the sentence. So, this sentence can also be written like this. Now, let's continue with our next example. He spoke with me yesterday. He spoke with me yesterday. In Turkish, O dün benim ile konuştu. O dün benim ile konuştu. In Japanese, Kare wa kino watashi to hanashimashita. Kare wa kino watashi to hanashimashita. Once again, we see that the parts of the sentence are in the same order. By the way, in Japanese, there is no space between the words. 
This sentence is actually written like this. Since I'm trying to show the similarities, I have separated the words from one another as much as possible. Now, let's continue with our next example. I will meet my friend who is waiting in front of the building. I will meet my friend who is waiting in front of the building. In Turkish, ben binanın önünde beklemekte olan arkadaşım ile buluşacağım. Ben binanın önünde beklemekte olan arkadaşım ile buluşacağım. In Japanese, watashi wa tatemono no mae de matte iru tomodachi ni aimasu. Watashi wa tatemono no mae de matte iru tomodachi ni aimasu. Here we see a more complex sentence. As you can observe, the order of the parts of the sentences, the suffixes, and as well as the compounds are constructed in a very similar way in Turkish and Japanese. I would like to point out something here for those who have some Japanese grammatical knowledge. In the Japanese sentence, matte iru, which is the translation of beklemekte olan in Turkish, is the present continuous conjugation of the verb to wait, and this tense is constructed by using so-called te form of the verb in Japanese. This actually means to be in the status of waiting, exactly as in beklemekte olan in the Turkish sentence. That is why this form is represented as continuous form of the verb in both languages. As those of you who speak Japanese will know very well, the infinitive form of this verb is matsu, and the te form of it is matte, as it is seen in this sentence. A similarity that could be considered as very interesting is that, as you can see in the Turkish sentence, the verb beklemek, which is to wait, receives te suffix at the end of it, which is very similar to Japanese. This suffix can also be ta, depending on the vowel harmony in Turkish. This will be explained in more details in the next videos. This sentence can also be said as Ben binanın önünde bekleyen arkadaşım ile buluşacağım in Turkish and both sentences mean the same. The next sentence will be a question. Shall we read that book together today? Shall we read that book together today in Turkish? Biz bugün beraber şu kitabı okuyacak mıyız? Biz bugün beraber şu kitabı okuyacak mıyız? In Japanese, Watashi tachi wa kiyo issho ni sono hon o yomimasu ka? Watashi tachi wa kiyo issho ni sono hon o yomimasu ka? In Japanese, to make a sentence a question, we add ka at the end of the sentence. And in Turkish, we add m, mi, mu, mu, depending on the vowel harmony. And then the personal pronoun. In these type of sentences, ka in Japanese comes after the verb stem and tense suffixes as in Turkish. The next example will be a question as well. When is the meeting? When is the meeting? In Turkish, toplantı ne zamandır? Toplantı ne zamandır? In Japanese, kaigi wa itsu desu ka? Kaigi wa itsu desu ka? In our next example, Let's make a question in question. Do you know when the meeting is? Do you know when the meeting is? In Turkish, Toplantı ne zaman biliyor musunuz? Toplantı ne zaman biliyor musunuz? In Japanese, Kaigi wa itsu ka shitte imasu ka? Kaigi wa itsu ka shitte imasu ka? Again, in this sentence, it is clearly visible how similar the sentence is constructed. Just as a side note, we can construct this sentence in different ways in Turkish, such as Toplantının ne zaman olduğunu biliyor musunuz? Or Toplantı ne zamandır biliyor musunuz? And they all mean the same thing. The next example is about experience. That is to say, if something has been done in the past or not. Have you ever been to Japan? Have you ever been to Japan? In Japanese, this sentence is said as Nihon ni itta koto ga arimasu ka? Nihon ni itta koto ga arimasu ka? The literal translation of this 
into Turkish is Japonya'ya gitmişliğiniz var mı? Japonya'ya gitmişliğiniz var mı? Which is basically asking about the existence of going to Japan. Well, here it is really almost impossible to literally translate this sentence into English. But if I try my best, the literal translation could be something like this. Does it exist that you have gone to Japan? Does it exist that you have gone to Japan? Itta koto in the Japanese sentence and gitmişliğiniz in the Turkish sentence are the nominalized form of the verb to go in the past tense. So they are basically a noun. The next sentence is about obligation in Japanese and Turkish. I must do my homework by tomorrow. I must do my homework by tomorrow. In Japanese, this sentence is said as Ashita made shukudai o shinakereba narimasen. Ashita made shukudai o shinakereba narimasen. The literal translation of this sentence into Turkish is Yarına kadar ödevimi yapmazsam olmaz. Yarına kadar ödevimi yapmazsam olmaz. When we translate these sentences literally into English, what we obtain is It does not work or it is not acceptable or it is not possible if I do not do my homework by tomorrow. It does not work. It is not acceptable. It is not possible if I do not do my homework by tomorrow. Shinakeraba in the Japanese sentence and yapmazsam in the Turkish sentence are the conditional form of the negation of the verb to do in both languages. And narimasen in the Japanese sentence and olmaz in the Turkish sentence are the negation of the verb to become in both languages. In Turkish, we can also say this sentence as yarına kadar ödevimi yapmalıyım and both sentences mean the same. The next sentence will be about the use of conditional form in Turkish and Japanese. It would have been good if I had spoken with my dad yesterday. It would have been good if I had spoken with my dad yesterday. In Turkish, Dün babam ile konuşsaydım iyi olurdu. Or, Dün babam ile konuşsaydım iyiydi. In Japanese, Kino chichito hanaseba yokatta. Kino chichito hanaseba yokatta. In this example, Hanaseba in the Japanese sentence and konuşsaydım in the Turkish sentence are in the conditional form of the verb to speak in both languages. Now, let's make another example about this topic. It would have been good if you had not said so. It would have been good if you had not said so. In Turkish, böyle söylemeseydin iyi olurdu or böyle söylemeseydin iyiydi. In Japanese, Ko Ivana Kerava Yokatta. Ko Ivana Kerava Yokatta. Once again here, Ivana Kerava in the Japanese sentence and Soylemeseidin in the Turkish sentence are in the conditional form of the negation of the verb to say in both languages. Let's continue with a similar example. Let's have a picnic if it does not rain. Let's have a picnic if it does not rain. In Turkish, Eğer yağmur yağmazsa piknik yapalım. Eğer yağmur yağmazsa piknik yapalım. In Japanese, Moshi ame ga furana kattara pikinikku o shimashou. Moshi ame ga furana kattara pikinikku o shimashou. The next example is about asking if doing something is okay and appropriate. Can I sit here? Can I sit here? This sentence is said in Japanese as Koko ni suwatte mo ii desu ka? Koko ni suwatte mo ii desu ka? The literal translation of this sentence into Turkish is Buraya otursam da uygun mudur? Or Buraya otursam da iyi olur mu? Or Buraya otursam da olur mu? And if we translate these sentences literally in English, we obtain Is it okay? Is it good? Is it appropriate if I sit here? Is it okay? Is it good? Is it appropriate if I sit here? 
By the way, E, which you see in the Japanese sentence, has the same meaning with E that you see in the Turkish sentence, and their pronunciation is almost the same. In the next sentence, we will see how to express what someone else has said. The company president is saying that he does not have time today. The company president is saying that he does not have time today. In Turkish, şirketin yöneticisi bugün vaktim yok diye söylüyor. Şirketin yöneticisi bugün vaktim yok diye söylüyor. In Japanese, şaço wa kiyo jikan ga nai to itteimasu. Şaço wa kiyo jikan ga nai to itteimasu. We can say this sentence in different ways in Turkish, such as Şirketin yöneticisi bugün vakti olmadığını söylüyor. And Şirketin yöneticisi bugün vaktim yok diyor. And all of them mean the same. In our next sentence, we will see the use of to also as well in Japanese and Turkish. The future will come one day as well. The future will come one day as well. In Turkish, gelecek de bir gün gelecek. Gelecek de bir gün gelecek. In Japanese, mirai mo itsuka kimas. Mirai mo itsuka kimas. Mo particle has the same function in this sentence as de in the Turkish one. As mentioned earlier, they both mean to also as well. Now, let's make another example in which mo particle is used. Please come tomorrow, even if we speak today or not. Please come tomorrow, even if we speak today or not. In Turkish, Biz bugün konuşsak da, konuşmasak da yarın gel lütfen. Biz bugün konuşsak da, konuşmasak da yarın gel lütfen. In Japanese, Vatash tachi wa kiyo hanashite mo, hanasanakute mo ashita kite kudasai. Vatash tachi wa kiyo hanashite mo, hanasanakute mo ashita kite kudasai. Again, in this sentence, it is very easy to see how similar the sentence structure is between Turkish and Japanese. Now, let's make another similar example. No matter how much I read, I understand nothing. No matter how much I read, I understand nothing. In Turkish, Ne kadar okusam da hiçbir şey anlamıyorum. Ne kadar okusam da hiçbir şey anlamıyorum. In Japanese, Ikura yonde mo nani mo wakarimasen. Ikura yonde mo nani mo wakarimasen. Another similarity is that when nothing is used in Japanese and Turkish sentences, the verb is negated while it is not in English. Let's take a look at the consecutive actions in the next example. I ate dinner, brushed my teeth, and then went to bed. I ate dinner, brushed my teeth, and then went to bed. In Turkish, Akşam yemeğini yiyip, dişlerimi fırçalayıp uyudum. Akşam yemeğini yiyip, dişlerimi fırçalayıp uyudum. In Japanese, Ban gohan no tabete, ha o migaite nemashita. Ban gohan no tabete, ha o migaite nemashita. Consecutive actions are constructed with the te form of the verb in Japanese. In Turkish, the verbs receive ip or up suffix depending on the vowel harmony. As it is seen, almost all elements of the sentence are in a great harmony between Turkish and Japanese. In our next example, we will see how to tell an opinion. I think that this movie is very interesting. I think that this movie is very interesting. In Turkish, bu film çok ilginç diye düşünüyorum. Bu film çok ilginç diye düşünüyorum. In Japanese, kono eiga wa totemo omoshiroi to omotte imasu. Kono eiga wa totemo omoshiroi to omotte imasu. This sentence can also be said like this in Turkish. Bu filmin çok ilginç olduğunu düşünüyorum. And it means exactly the same. Our next sentence is about making a conclusion upon observations. The dinner looks delicious. The dinner 
looks delicious. In Turkish, akşam yemeği lezzetli gibidir. Or, akşam yemeği lezzetli gibi görünüyor. In Japanese, ban gohan wa oishi sou desu. Ban gohan wa oishi sou desu. Let's make another example about this. It seems like my mom is going to work early today. It seems like my mom is going to work early today. In Turkish, annem bugün işe erken gidecek gibidir. Or, annem bugün işe erken gidecek gibi görünüyor. In Japanese, haha wa kiyo shiboto ni hayako ikisou desu. Haha wa kiyo shiboto ni hayako ikisou desu. Again, in this sentence, it is very clear to see the harmony between the Japanese and Turkish sentences. Let's make a similar example. I was like I was going to cry. Or, I was about to cry. In Turkish, ağlayacak gibi oldum. Ağlayacak gibi oldum. In Japanese, nakisou ni narimashita. Nakisou ni narimashita. The next example is about to say something that you have heard. I have heard that it will snow tomorrow. I have heard that it will snow tomorrow. In Turkish, yarın kar yağacakmış. Yarın kar yağacakmış. In Japanese, ashita yuki ga furusou desu. Ashita yuki ga furusou desu. In Turkish, this form is represented as a tense, while it is not in Japanese. However, their function is just the same. By using this form, we talk about something that we have not seen, but we have heard or learned from someone else and from whom we have heard is not really important. Let's make another example about this, but this time we're going to use another suffix in Japanese that has the same functionality. I have heard that Tom will not come to school tomorrow. I have heard that Tom will not come to school tomorrow. In Turkish, Tom yarın okula gelmeyecekmiş. Tom yarın okula gelmeyecekmiş. In Japanese, Tom wa ashita gakkou ni konairashi. Tom wa ashita gakkou ni konairashi. In this example, we have used rashi instead of so and we obtain the same meaning. And the harmony among the parts of the sentences is again very clear. The next example is about to utter a hope. I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. I hope it does not rain tomorrow. In Japanese, this sentence is said as Ashita ame ga furanai to ii desu. Ashita ame ga furanai to ii desu. A literal translation of this into Turkish is Yarın yağmur yağmazsa iyidir or Yarın yağmur yağmazsa iyi olur. When we translate these sentences literally into English, what we obtain is It will be good if it does not rain tomorrow. It will be good if it does not rain tomorrow. We can say this sentence as Umarım yarın yağmur yağmaz as well in Turkish and this could be the literal translation of I hope it does not rain tomorrow. The next sentence is from the news. I have seen it while reading and I wanted to use it for this video. Here you see the literal translation of this Japanese sentence into Turkish and English as much as possible. What I would like to point out is to see how similar the sentence structure between Turkish and Japanese just with the help of the color codes. As we are coming to the end of this video, I would like to talk about a verb which took my attention so much when I first saw it in Japanese. This verb is to obtain. As mentioned, the verb is to obtain. In Turkish, elde etmek, and in Japanese, teni ireru. When we take a look at the verb in Japanese, the meaning of the kanji, which I have written in blue, is hand. Exactly as in Turkish. El means hand. Ireru, which I have written in red in Japanese, means to put in, like putting something into a drawer. In short, the literal translation of the verb in Japanese 
is to put something in the hand. In Turkish, the literal translation of elde etmek is to have something in the hand. These both verbs mean the same and they are expressed almost in the exact same way. And that is to me remarkable. And it is definitely possible to show such examples. We have come to the end of today's video. I would like to thank you so much for your time and I hope that you found this video interesting. The similarities that have been shown only in this video could indicate that Turkish and Japanese may have even closer relationship than what is considered today. That is why Turkish speaking people can learn how to speak Japanese very quickly. If you are one of those who speak Japanese, I invite you to learn Turkish and experience by yourself how similar these two languages are. And if you are one of those who speak Turkish, I invite you to learn Japanese. This channel will host two language classes in the future, Japanese for Turkish speaking people and Turkish for English speaking people. To benefit from these similarities between Turkish and Japanese, it could even be helpful to teach Japanese in Turkish schools and Turkish in Japanese schools to make the learning process of a foreign language less challenging. I hope to see you in the next videos with new examples. Görüşmek üzere, saygılar.